Hello everybody, Aki here. Welcome back to Corpse Party D2, Zero Hope. We're about to begin Chapter 6. Uh, oh. Shiha! After all we've been through, I can't believe, I can't believe that she's dead. Shiho, why? I couldn't accept this. She can't, she couldn't be dead. Fighting back tears, I grabbed Shiho by her shoulders and shook her, praying that her eyes would open. Shiho? Her body was limp in my hands, there was no pulse, and her skin was cold to the touch. No matter how hard I tried to delude myself, the fact remained that my little sister was dead. No! I got all the O's. Why? Why did this happen? Who will I look out for if I can't- if you- who- oh, no, no. Who will I look out for if I can't- if- oh. Who will I look out for if you can't be next to me? Chapter 6 My Dearest Sister I stood alone in the stairwell landing. My head was swimming in conflicting emotions and my breathing was irregular. Why? The terror in Asahara's eyes had made me hesitate. When I chased our new Akura to the stairwell, what was I chasing them for? Was I trying to protect them? If that was the reason I chased them, then why was Asahara so terrified when I caught up to them? Could it be... I haven't let go of my plan to help Shiha? Well, while Asahara couldn't have understood my reasons, she wasn't wrong about me trying to get people trapped here. Back when Shiho died, I tried telling others the story of the girl in red, the one who was who had trapped me and Shiho in this place. But after I escaped this place, the story wouldn't transport anyone to the schoolhouse again. That's how I became known as the girl who liked telling ghost stories. While I was trying to get that girl in the red dress to bring Shiho company so she wouldn't be alone here. But something must have changed, because now the story that brings people here is about my sister. I tightened my grip on the sword. I was holding the sword I was holding and clenched my other hand into a fist. What am I meant to do? My duty as a teacher was to protect my students, but could I throw away my promise to bring Shiho company just because these are my students? After all, I was the one who sabotaged the cultural festival preparations until the night before, ensuring my students who would have to work late tonight. I was the one who told the new ghost story to bring them here. Why did I go through all this trouble? To give Shiho company? Or to prove that I was actually... that I can actually protect someone this time? I gritted my teeth and reached into my pocket. After searching for a moment, I pulled out a worn ribbon that was once a bright yellow. Shiho, what should I do? I opened my fist so that I could see the ribbon in the palm of my hand. I tried to remember all the times I had helped Shiho put that ribbon in her hair. Oh, hi. Suddenly, a ghost hand snatched the ribbon away before I could react. Hey! The ghost that had stolen the ribbon ran upstairs, back to the third floor. Get back here! That's not yours to take! I chased after the ghost, holding, following it into the third floor hallway. The ghost kept running, eventually ducking into the principal's office. I was about to follow it inside when the door burst off its hinges and flung across the hallway, hitting the opposite wall with a thud. A figure slowly began to emerge from the room, step by step clanking metallically with each movement. Once it was completely in the hallway, I realized that it had a suit of samurai armor that was on display. In its hand, it held a naginata which it lowered into a combat stance. I raised my sword in a defensive stance, trying to think of a way to get past the armor so I could catch the ghost that stole Shiho's ribbon. The armor swung its nagi naga at me, and I dodged out of the way. I took note of how long the reach of the Naginata was, trying to figure out what a safe distance would be. The Naginata swung over me again, but this time I dodged towards the armor instead of away, and struck, the, struck a blow against the helmet. The helmet flew off the suit of armor, empty. Even though I was certain the armor was being possessed by a spirit, it was still unnerving when the armor continued to move without its helmet. I ducked out of the way to of another swipe and ran past the armor into the principal's office. 
I looked around and noticed that the ghost that had Shio's ribbon wasn't there. Hearing the clanking of the living armor behind me, I started looking for any hidden exits that I might have overlooked. I was about to start pushing a cabinet when the haunted armor flung its naginata at me. I barely backed out of the way and the naginata lodged, lodged itself in the cabinet. I turned to face the now unarmed suit of armor and raised my sword. After watching its movements to make sure that it wouldn't just punch me when I got close, I charged and swung at one of the, arms guard, the arm guards. The armor changed the orient orientation of its arm at the last moment and deflected the blow, then swung at me with its other gauntlet, hitting me in the tummy. Damn! I fell f backwards, but despite the pain, I made sure to keep my sword raised as I could parry any further attacks. Scrambling to my feet and taking a few breaths to steady myself, I realized that this was a losing battle. Even if I could dismantle the armor, I'd not be able to find the ghost with Shiho's ribbon if I stayed here. I backed away from the armor, looking for an exit that the ghost might have used. I noticed that there was a hole in the floorboards in a corner of the room, just wide enough for a person to fit through. After checking to make sure the armor wasn't about to strike, I ran to the hole and jumped into it. After navigating through gaps of the floorboards on the second floor ceiling, I was able to drop down into what appeared to be the girl's bathroom. I quickly checked each of the stalls, but no one was in one, any of them. Where is she? I ran to the door, but I... But when I tried to open it, the door wouldn't budge. I should have known she'd block it. The sound of several toilets flushing in unison echoed through the room. Huh? I walked back over to the open stalls and saw that the toilets were starting to regurgitate blood. That is a nasty word. Regurgitate. It only took a moment for me to realize that this was a trap. I ran back at the door and kicked it, but it wouldn't. It still wouldn't budge. I'm not dying to a trick like this. I heard the sound of running water coming from the sinks. I turned to see that blood was starting to flow out from them as well. Ugh! I walked over to the sinks and tried to turn the faucets back, but they wouldn't budge. Out of the corner of my eye, I noticed something in one of the mirrors. Or more accurately, something that wasn't there. My reflection. Without a second thought, I raised my sword and struck the reflectionless mirror. The glass shattered, and the door keeping me inside the bathroom shattered into splinters of wood in the same fashion. I left the bathroom immediately, not looking back. As soon as I left the bathroom, I was greeted by a familiar figure. Ah! The ghost jump, apparently surprised to see me. Give the ribbon back! The ghost turned and ran away, and I gave chase. We eventually came to the stairwell, and the ghost began to run down the stairs. I heard the sound of clanking, and I looked up briefly to see that the haunted armor was running down the stairs after me. Not this again. I refocused on the ghost girl and hoped that I could catch her before the armor caught up to us. The ghost girl just kept running, and I was sure the hallway should have ended by the time she finally ducked into the room. I ran through the open doorway, and my sword at the ready. As soon as I stepped inside, the door slammed shut behind me. I looked around the room, but I couldn't see any sign of the ghost. Come on out! I know you're here! There was a silence. Then I saw the ghost step from behind a cabinet and lay the ribbon on the desk. If you want it back, I won't keep it from you anymore. But... Before you touch it, I need to warn you about something. I held out my sword, but I doubted it was intimidating to a dead girl. Make it quick. The girl nodded and sighed. In life, I was very sensitive to the paranormal. Now that I'm only a spirit, I can sense things that others never could. In the time since my death, I managed to get close to the one who trapped me and my friends here. Despite her attempts to be rid of me, I'm able to see into her memories. What are you getting at? I took this ribbon from you since it still has a connection with your sister. Now that I've imprinted her memories on the ribbon, merely touching it would be enough to show you what your sister has become. Whether you still support a monster like her after seeing these memories is up to you. The girl faded away, apparently done talking to me. So what if my sister... Oh, so what if my sister is the new master of this place? That doesn't make her a monster. But if she's not a monster, why did I try to sacrifice people to her like she was some sort of evil spirit? I gritted my teeth and stepped closer to the desk, placing my sword on top of it. Shiho's yellow ribbon lay on the desk. Slowly, hesitantly, I reached out and touched the ribbon. My vision blurred and when the world was solid again, I was someplace else. I saw my sister standing by a prone figure. Shiho looked like she was alive. But I knew that couldn't be the case. When Shiho stood over the figure on the ground, I realized that she was wearing a ribbon in her hair. Just like her old ribbon, only this one was a crimson red. 
Did you do it? The crone figure... The, the, the crone? The prone figure was shaking, looking more closely. I could tell that the girl was sobbing. She wore the Haisley Junior High uniform. A broken response came from the girl, but I couldn't quite make it out. So she's dead then. Did you make sure? The girl nodded, though it was almost indistinguishably from her. Shivering. I see. That was a part of the deal, wasn't it? You kill her, and I let you go free. She had been looking down at the girl on the floor with interest and maybe a bit of concern, but her face twisted into a cruel smile. Did you believe that? Did you think I'd hold up my end of the deal? The girl looked up, but I couldn't see her face well from where I, the memory had me standing. Don't tell me you're surprised that I'd betray you. I tried to kill you when we first met. What made you think that I could that you could trust me over your best friend? I mean, you're going to have that sleepover and everything. Or were you already planning to kill her and just needed an excuse? I felt sick. This is what I wanted once, wasn't it? Send people here to give Shiho company? Why didn't I ever think that might change Shiho? This isn't the little sister that looked up to me. I suppose it doesn't matter now. I was going to kill you myself, but it looks like it'd be more interesting to see what you do on your own. I wonder, will you starve to death? Trying to escape? Or will you punish yourself? <laughs> the wicked laughter that came from Shiho's mouth wasn't hers. It couldn't be. What the hell happened to her? Be sure to keep me entertained. It's not every day that I get a gift from my dearest sister. No, this isn't what I wanted for you, Shiho. I just wanted to make sure you weren't lonely. And besides, I never followed through on that promise. Even now, I have to bring my students back home. I never sacrificed anyone. Yeah. Oh, the girl who was lying on the ground found herself, uh, forced herself to her feet and stood up. She turned and ran away from Shiho, toward where my location in the memory was. As the girl passed by, I recognized her. She was one of the two girls I told Shiho's story to, back when I first heard of the Heisui Junior High students going missing. I sent them here. I killed them. The memory faded away, leaving me standing over the desk in the yellow ribbon. The sight of Asahara's terrified face made sense now. I am the murderer she thinks I am, and now that I know how to bring more people here again, I'm too dangerous to leave alive. I withdrew my hand from Shiho's ribbon and clutched at my head. I'm the reason Shiho turned into this monster. I pulled at my hair and clenched my teeth. I wanted to curl up and die. What kind of an older sister am I? I couldn't protect her, and then I turned her into a monster. I heard a pounding at the door, along with a familiar clanking noise. Maybe it'd be better for me to die here. That way, Shiho wouldn't be lonely anymore. She'd have me. Maybe I'd be able to make up for being a terrible sister in life by staying by her side in death. I reached out and grabbed the sword off the desk. I'm sorry, Shiho. I turned the blade towards myself and tried to remember how the ritual suicide worked. I think it was supposed to be done with a knife, but this sword was what I had. I failed you as an older sister. I took a deep breath. Please, forgive me. Sister dearest. I froze. That voice sounded familiar. I forgive you, sister dearest. That voice didn't sound like the Shiho from the memory. Shiho? Did you forget your promise, sister dearest? When you found my body, you promised me you wouldn't waste your life. I lowered the sword and looked around, trying to find Shiho. Where are you? I'm still weak right now. If you want to talk to me one last time, come to the classroom that I died in. Bring my old ribbon. You'll only be able to stop my other half if you have that with you. Hurry, sister dearest. Your students need you. I couldn't find Shiho anywhere. Why could I only hear her? What about that haunted armor? I'll make sure it doesn't hurt you, but I can't do anything else until you stop my other half. Other half? What does that mean? Was Shiho split into two spirits, the same way the previous master of the school was? My thoughts were interrupted by the door sliding open on its own. I looked outside to see the haunted, the haunted, the haunted armor had collapsed into a pile. Shiho. 
I turned to look at Shiho's ribbon, then looked at the sword in my hands. Alright. This was no longer a situation that could be resolved by violence. I tossed the sword aside and grabbed Shiho's ribbon. I won't let anyone else die because of me. Thank you for bringing me to my senses, Shiho. I held the ribbon close and ran out the room. I ran down the hallway searching for the classroom Shiho died in, while the layout had changed since my last visit. I still remember the room number, classroom 1-2. I finally reached the classroom and slid the door open without hesitation. I stepped inside with Shiho's ribbon held before me. Inside the classroom, I quickly saw why Shiho had told me to hurry. Tayama, Asahara, and Iwakuro were all lying on the floor, unconscious, or worse. At the front of the room, I saw Shiho, seemingly alive and well, holding Wakahisa up by the throat. Shiho! Shiho turned to me, and it only took me a few moments to realize this wasn't my little sister anymore. Sister dearest! Shiho looked at Wakahisa and smirked. I could see that Wakahisa didn't have much longer if I didn't help her. I can't thank you enough for bringing me more toys, sister dearest. The old ones broke too quickly. Shiho, put Wakahisa down right now. You're hurting her. Eh? Why? She hasn't been much fun to watch, so I might as well tear her apart personally. I stepped around De Debris. <laughs> I stepped around Debris and towards Shiho, making sure to keep her ribbon between us. Shiho, this isn't like you. You're not a murderer. You can't keep hurting people. But sister dearest, you brought them here for me. Don't you want me to play with them? I wasn't getting through to her. Shiho, don't you remember everything we went through in this place? Why were you trapped in that bathroom stall? When you were trapped in that bathroom stall, weren't you scared? Why are you bringing that up, sister dearest? Let go of Wakahisa, gently, and I'll explain. She outside and lowered Wakahisa to the ground before releasing her grip on her throat. Wakahisa immediately collapsed to her knees, panting for breath. I don't get it, sister dearest. Why did you bring them to me if you don't want me to have fun with them? Shiho. Alright. So maybe you've got you've forgotten being trapped in the stall. But weren't you terrified when that anatomical model tried to grab you? Why? Why are you bringing these up? Think about how it feels to be in those situations, Shiho. Do you really want to put others through that same pain? And what if I do? I... Shiho, please, stop this. This isn't how I want to remember you. You wanted this too! You sent me those two girls! I realize that, Shiho. But I made a mistake, I admit that. I only wanted to make sure you weren't lonely. I didn't want you to turn into this. Sister dearest, do you not love me anymore? Shio lowered her head and her eyes were suddenly hidden behind her hair. I felt the air around me getting thicker. I had to make my move soon or I'd lose the opportunity. That's not it, Shio. I still believe in you. I believe in the little sister who gave her final moments to write me a warning, who lingered beyond the grave to ensure my survival. That's the Shio I want to remember. Shio stood perfectly still. I chanced a quick look around to see that Wakahisa and the others were starting to get up. I looked like sh it looked like Shiho's power over them was weakening. I took a deep breath and walked over to Shiho, stopping right in front of her. Shiho, I took something from you when I left last time. I kept it close, hoping that it'd prevent me from forgetting about you. But in the end, I was just using it as a crutch. It let me think that sacrificing people for your sake was acceptable. I think I think it's time that I return it to you, Shiho. It always did look better on you. I reached out and touched Shiho's hair, hesitating to see her reaction. When she didn't move, I slipped the red ribbon out of her hair and let it fall, fall to the floor. Would you turn around for me? Shiho obediently turned away from me, and I began to put her old ribbon back into her hair. It's been so long since you helped me with my ribbon, sister dearest. I finished tying the ribbon and took a step away from Shiho. I'm afraid this will be the last time for a while, Shiho. Now, let me see how it looks from the front. Shiho turned slowly, hesitantly. The air seemed lighter than it had been, and I heard footsteps behind me suggesting that the students were back on their feet. When Shiho finally looked up at me, she looked like herself again. Thank you, sister dearest. 
I'm sorry I put you and your students through so much pain. I never wanted to be a murderer, but my conscience was steeled away. I don't blame you for what happened, Shiho. If it's anyone's fault, it's mine. If I was able to protect you the first time, it would never have come to this. And if I hadn't tried to hurt others for your sake, it never would have gotten this bad. Sister. Yes? Shio gave me a warm smile, taking, making me almost forget that I was only talking to her spirit. I forgive you. What you did was terrible, but you can still make up for it. This time, try to keep your promise, sister dearest. My promise. Don't waste your life in regret and anger. That's all I ask from you, sister. I need to do more than that, though. I need to atone for what I put my students and those children from Heisui Junior High through. I'm sure you'll find a way, sister dearest. Shiho looked around the room at my students. I don't have much strength left. The vengeful spirits of this school are already in the midst of choosing a new master. Before I fade away, I'll send you back to your world. You'll have to walk through a bright passage to return to your world. Whatever you do, don't look back, or you won't make it home. I turned to my students and nodded at them. That's right, don't look back. My students looked at each other and then started nodding. If you say so, let's get it over with. Shiho lowered her head and held up her hands as if performing a ritual. The vengeful spirit will be here soon. I need to do this now, or we'll miss our chance. Shiho looked up at me. Goodbye, sister dearest. I felt the urge to cry, but I had tried to hold it in for the sake of my students. Goodbye, Shiho. I love you. The schoolhouse faded away into a blinding light. I lowered my head and forced my tears back. I couldn't cry here. I love you, sister dearest. Her voice came to me through the light. And it felt like the tears run down my cheeks. And I felt the tears run down my cheeks. I won't break my promise this time, Shiho. I stepped forward into the light. At the end of that passage, we found ourselves back in our homeroom. This time, everyone who had gone into that old schoolhouse had made it back alive. We're back? For real this time? This seems real to me. The students looked all around the room, finding that everything was just the same as we had left it when we headed out for the night. This sure doesn't seem fake to me. I'd say we made it. Wakihisa pinched herself and patted down her body before sighing with relief. If this isn't real, it's still better than that illusion I saw. I suppose Shiho must have tricked some of them into thinking they had made it back when her conscience was still sealed away. Don't worry everyone, this is reality. As surprising as that may be. Asahara looked at me with a piercing gaze. After a moment, she sighed and nodded. We don't have much but to take Miss Asagawa's word for it. I suppose it was too much to ask for her to trust me again after what I put her through. I'll have to do more than say a few words to repair the damage I've caused. I apologize for dragging you all to my personal affairs. I promise to make it up to you whenever I can. Uh, in whatever way I can. For now, you should all head home. It's past midnight, and I'm sure your families are worried about you. The students nodded slowly, agreeing, but despite their assent, I could tell from their expressions that they were still uncertain whether to trust me. I'm out. See ya. My parents are going to think I'm up to no good if I don't hurry back. I hope my sister lets me go to the festival tomorrow after this. She's going to be pissed. The four of them picked up their things and shuffled out of the classroom, talking amongst themselves, aside from an uncertain gaze from Wakahisa. They seemed to be avoiding making eye contact with me. I suddenly felt exhausted, as if my legs were about to give out. I pulled up a seat at one of the cafe tables that was set up and sat down. When I was talking to Shiho's vengeful half, it told me that I didn't want to remember her- I told her that I didn't want to remember her as a murderer. But I'm sure that goes both ways. Shiho didn't want her older- didn't want her older sister, the person she looked up to, to end up as an angry and manipulative person, sending people to their deaths. So from now on, I have to make sure I live in a way that would make Shiho proud. 
I need to atone for the sins I've committed in her name. I won't let you down again, Shiho, no matter what happens. You're my dearest little sister. Yay! So is there only one ending? Team Despair, written and developed by Jackal Dragon. Illustrated by Holly Moir. I hope I said that right. Copyright Corpse Party is internal is copyright of Team Grisgris Gris Grindhouse and 5 PV Games. Chapter 6. My dear sister, end. Is that it? Ho hold on, guys. I, uh... I saw this here. Uh, there's an extra chapter called The Mask of Malice. So let's let's check that out. Maybe it's a preview to the next game. Oh shit. It's the other it's the other group. Okay. Extra chapter mask of malice. Ichan, you're here. I closed the club room door behind me and nodded to the others when they looked over at me. Sorry everyone, I had to talk to one of my teachers about an assignment. I sensed that the others didn't particularly care about my excuse now that I was here, which was quickly confirmed by Jin when Jin waved it off and beckoned me over. Hey, Sakata, take a look at this. I walked over to Jin, to where Jin was sitting, and looked over her shoulder at her laptop. Fuka stood on the other side of Jin, looking closely at the screen. I thought this site was taken down. How did you find this? It came back online just a week or so ago, I think. I only heard that it was back last night. What kind of site are you looking at? Jin moved her laptop a bit so I could see the screen better. The site she was browsing looked like a blog of some kind. The title read, Aiko's Field Guide to the Supernatural. I'm not familiar with the name. Really? I'm surprised you've never heard of Aiko. She was almost as popular as Naho for a while, but her blog disappeared a little while, a little over a year ago. A lot of people thought something bad happened to her. I could sense the excitement emanating from Fuka and Jin, so I decided not to point out that I hadn't been interested in the supernatural until Haru dragged me into this club. Did you say something about Naho? I couldn't help it over here. We're not talking about Naho, we're talking about Aiko. Her blog just came back on after being gone for over a year. Looks like all the old entries are gone though. The four of us crowded around Jin's laptop as she explored Aiko's blog. While, I, while listening to the others talk, I gathered that Aiko and Naho had apparently gone to the same high school. They ran competing blogs about the paranormal, but in 2012, Aiko's blog suddenly disappeared one day. There was a lot of excitement in the room while Jin looked over the resurrected blog, but I sensed the excitement give away to disappointment as my friends read more entries. Are you sure this is the same Aiko? It doesn't sound like her at all. Yeah, this Aiko sounds like a nagging mom. That's a perfect description. I mean, of course ghosts are dangerous. You don't need to keep telling us that. This is so lame. I can't believe someone would pretend to be Aiko and pose dumb stuff like this. I know! I was really looking forward to that app for finding ghosts that Aiko was working on before she disappeared. She said that her friend was almost done with it too. I still miss those stories that Aiko used to share about the haunted places she visit. They were much more fun to read than Naho's. I guess we should see if someone archived those stories somewhere then, because whoever is running Aiko's blog now sure isn't going to give us the old stuff anymore. I felt a lot of negative feelings growing in the room, so I decided to try and get everyone's mind off their disappointment. Hey, why don't we set up that thing we were going to do last week? Weren't we doing? Weren't we going to try and contact that girl with Daiki that Daiki told us about? Haru lit up with excitement almost instantly when she remembered. That's right, we're going to talk with Shiho. But then Fuka had to go home early that night. Oh, you didn't do it? You didn't have to wait for me. We can do it without everyone here, you know. Ugh. I went over to our supply cabinet and started going through it, looking for the items we need for the ritual. Let's do it now while we remember. Maybe we'll finally learn why Hasegawa was so obsessed with ghost stories. I'll set it up. This is going to be so fun. We couldn't have known what happened when we tried to contact Shiho. Or that's what everyone else told themselves. Deep down, I knew that something like this would happen one day or another. 
We were little more than children, toying with forces beyond our understanding for our amusement. When we began the ritual meant to summon Shio Hasegawa to our classroom to talk to us, we were instead brought into an old schoolhouse. We foolishly split up to seek an exit. Haru and I were to explore the main building while Fuka and Jin explored the second wing. When Haru and I returned to the bridge between buildings to meet up with the others, we found the bridge destroyed and Jin's broken body lying on the ground in a pool of blood. Despite all our efforts, we never found Fuka. We had nearly lost hope when we finally found a friendly face. So, are you two stuck here too, huh? Oh, I read that wrong. That does seem to be the case. The air in the room was thick and overpowering. I felt like... I felt like barely controlled malice was being contained here. Is there really no way out? No easy way, no. This place is called a closed space, so I guess that means it's closed off from the outside world. But it wouldn't really matter if I found an exit since I already died here. You're dead? But you don't look like a ghost. I don't? Weird. I remember dying and watching over my sister as she escaped the place. As far as I know, she's the only one to ever make it out of here. That's terrible. Uh, are we going to die too? I mean, Ch Shin and Fuka are already... My head was reeling from the stress of the past few hours and the overwhelming feeling of malice pressing down on me. For some reason, the red ribbon in the unknown girl's hair was the hardest thing for me to focus on. Even looking at it gave me a headache. Well, if someone made it out, maybe we can too. I don't think that's going to happen, though. Well, why not? You see, I made a promise to some of the other ghosts. Some of them took a liking to Haru when they saw her. Huh? What do you mean? Since I know what it's like to be bored, I thought I'd let them have their fun. It's nothing personal, really. Though, to be honest, I'm looking forward to seeing what they do. The air in the room got even thicker, and my head felt like it was going to burst. Shadowy figures began to materialize around Haru, and she shivered in fear as she realized she was surrounded. I Ichan, help! I clutched my head, trying to will the pain away. I felt someone grab my other arm and begin to drag me away with superhuman strength. Well, let's give them their privacy, Iku. We don't want to get in the way of their fun. The girl who I had mistakenly assumed to be a friendly fellow victim dragged me out into the hallway, closing the door behind us. I could hear the sounds of a struggle in the other room of the door, but Haru didn't scream. Maybe she was trying to be brave, or maybe her mouth was being held shut. The ambiguity in what was happening behind those doors tortured me, almost as much as the pain splitting in my head. You can feel her pain from here, can't you? The girl let go of my arm, allowing me to collapse to the floor. As the pain intensified and spread throughout my body, I realized that the girl was right. I could feel Haru's pain. It felt like I was being flayed alive. The last time someone with so much spiritual energy was here, she was able to fight back against me. I suppose you're untrained though. Too bad for you. I looked up at the girl standing over me and forced myself to look in her eyes despite her face radiating malice. Who are you? Me? I'm Shio Hasegawa. There was a twisted smile on Shio's face as she looked down at me. She giggled and grabbed me by the throat. I understand that you wanted to talk to me. Was it everything you hoped for? I fought to stay conscious despite the agonizing pain racking my body, but I knew it was a losing battle. I could just barely see the red ribbon around Shio's hair. Hatred and pain seemed to emanate from it. Struggling against the stranglehold that Shio had, me, had on me, I tried to reach for the ribbon to pull it away from her. Shio simply slapped my arm away from her f with her free hand, her cruel grin growing wider. That's not very polite, Iku. That ribbon doesn't belong to you. My vision was starting to darken. Despite my overloaded senses, I could tell I was nearing my limit. Why? My pain suddenly lessened, leaving the oppressive feeling of Shiho's malice in the air. I couldn't understand why my senses had cleared up until I watched Shiho fling my body to the floor. It took me a moment to register that I wasn't in my own body anymore. Why, you ask? Shio turned and began to walk away from me, having already lost interest in my corpse. Well, if you must have a reason. 
Shiho looked over her shoulder at me, a strange expression on her face. It looked like her smirk from before, but there was something off about it. It's all for my beloved sister. A hint of regret lingered in the air, as if she didn't truly believe that. For a moment, it felt like there was someone else looking at me from Shiho's eyes. But before I could consider that, the atmosphere became thick and ang with, with anger, resentment, and hatred. The strange look on Ashio's face was replaced with her malicious smile and a wicked giggle. Shio turned and walked away, laughing as she did so. Who was that person? I thought I saw in her. Why did her face soften for a moment before her mask was replaced? I looked down at my body. I was clearly dead. As Shio and my friends were, I had nothing left to lose now. Taking in a deep breath out of habit, I began walking down the hallway. Shio wouldn't tell me the full story of what she's become, so I have to learn it myself. I have to find a way to stop Shio from hurting any more people. I can't let anyone else suffer like my friends and I did. And that's the extra chapter. That's cool, seeing them. Yep. Okay, uh, let me mute this for a second while I talk about the game. So, oh, come on. Okay, I guess the, the volume mixer doesn't want to work. Anyways, um, Corpse Party D20, I hope that was it. Uh, I don't know if there are multiple endings, but I, I enjoyed the, uh, the storytelling behind this. Uh, there were some awkward moments in between, like, how events would transition um personally i felt that the confrontation scene between shiho and kaori was a little too quick i don't know i felt like there should have been some sort of a struggle uh it kind of felt a little too easy i don't know if it's because i made like the right choices or something but uh i don't mean to say that you rushed the the story because you have you, you only have so much to work with um for a a game like this uh you know you you you, you can't expect a fan game to have the same uh, play time as the original games which you know average around like 20 ish hours to finish um i i remember reading somewhere on Jackal Dragon's Tumblr while I was downloading this that he felt like this one was his weakest he felt this game was the weakest of the D2 series and I kind of have to agree but it's not weak in the sense of like its concept I think it's uh, I think on its own as a standalone corpse party game and a continuation of Corpse Party Zero. I think that, you know, this was a good standalone game. Uh, introduced new characters, and uh, some of the characters were enjoyable. I felt like there should have been more development, but again, there's only so much you can work with with the game. Um, very interesting, uh, oh god, idea with bringing back Shiho and Kaori. Uh, I've always wanted to see how that would play out and seeing this happen in this sort of way is cool. Uh, the reason why I think this is the weakest uh, game that Jackal made is because of the, of the fact that not that many people in the Corpse Party franchise, or fandom I should say, uh, really acknowledge the Hasegawa sisters. Um, most Corpse Party fans come from the, the the remake on the PSP and Book of Shadows and the Hasegawa sisters weren't really mentioned that much um, except for the little notes that uh, were on the skeletons that you would find. But yeah, I feel like the reason why it was weaker is because not because of storytelling, but because of the fact that people didn't have much to grasp onto for this game. Um, 
for me personally, I thought it was really cool. I, I liked Corpse Party Zero, and it was very interesting to see how Jackal would bring this back and how he would work with the sisters. And most of the people that I know at least um, don't haven't played Corpse Party Zero. Uh, I don't think Emmy has played Corpse Party Zero, I'm not sure. But I can see why it is he would consider it the weakest just because of the fact that it's about the Hasegawa sisters. And people might think that the Hasegawa sisters are like another OC duo, but they're I, I, I guess they're not. I don't know. What the fuck? Stop. But yeah, uh, that was Corpse Party D2 Zero Hope. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, as always, I'll leave a link in the description below to play this game. I highly suggest you do to see if there may be more endings and whatnot. And I highly recommend you guys go play Corpse Party Zero before this one. Because that will clear up a lot of the things... A lot of the backstory behind uh, the Hasegawa sisters. Um, if you're a fan of Corpse Party in general, if you like the Corpse Party universe, this is a pretty good game to pick up with. If you are a um, a surface level fan who enjoys the original character, not uh, the uh, the the uh, the main characters like Ayumi Yoshiki. Uh, fuck's his name uh satoshi naomi um definitely his other two past games are more successful in those terms because d2 uh the first d2 game is ayumi and the second d2 game is with naomi so if you're a fan who just likes the corpse right universe play the whole series uh, if you are a fan of just the the PSP series and the Book of Shadows, then, you know, um, you can play up to D2, the hospital one, which is with Naomi, and you might as well wait for Dragon Mask, which I am not exactly sure, I, 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 I can't recall right now, um, who is in it. Uh, it was either Mayu, I think it's Mayu who's coming in Dragon Mask, so we'll look forward to that in the future that's currently in the demo stages. Uh, I'm going to wait until uh, version 3 to make a playthrough on it because version 3 is usually when uh, the, the whole story is done. Um, anything past version 3 is uh, adding in CGs and whatnot. But, yeah, that's it. Um, follow me on Twitter. Uh, I update stuff daily. Uh, you can follow me on Tumblr if you want to see some cool stuff. And, uh, yeah, this is Aki. Have a great day. And remember to always stay safe. Don't tell me, baby. Because I don't really want to know what happened last night. Oh, no, just say it wasn't so. Just say you love me. Let me fall back into sleep. But when I wake up, you say I have a